As you stepped inside the building with the blue doors, darkness greeted you, but nothing else. You didn't bump into anything, and your outstretched hands found no purchase either. You were left in the dark and the silence. This was odd. Was this a trap? No. No, it didn't feel like it. The atmosphere was soft and with a smell in the air of what could only be described as watered down potpourri. You took a step deeper in and something glimmered high above your head. It was a familiar sight. A swirling liquid light captured inside of a giant glass dome similar to the lantern you had inside the boat. The room gently blossomed with light and colour. The full scale of the interior was revealed. The high ceiling was illuminated now. The beams and wall trims shined in their golden bronze. The decorations filtered in a teal hue from the stained glass windows. Cascading down from brilliance, the light pooled into the open gallery, where hallways, corridors and staircases peppered the walls encircling you. But where? Where was she? Where was the giantess that greeted you only moments before? You glanced behind, but just the back of the large periwinkle doors stood there. This was odd. Had you dreamt her up? Was she a mirage or a hologram sent to open the door to those deemed friendly? Then it happened again. The spheres of sound erupted in your head, pulling you towards one direction. A staircase. No sooner had you stepped forward, an enormous hand curled down the spiralling staircase and invited you to follow. You did as obeyed. The hand retracted slowly as you marched up the steps. The hand ostensibly knowing the speed in which to move. After one spiral of the stairs, you were on the next floor up. This was where the giantess's hand somehow disappeared from view. It was as though just the blink of your eyes caused it to vanish. There was no telling which direction she had gone, but the smell materialised again. To the right, down the hallway, you could almost see the sparkling particles of perfume enticing you. Follow the scent then. It was all sweetness and laughter within these walls. The ambiance reached out to you imparting the memories of days and nights of merriment, whispers and titterings of many people from all stretches of time. It tickled across your face and around the apples of your cheeks until it slipped away again, and you were met with just the sound of your own footsteps on the marbled floor. A coil of tangerine revealed her to you once more, and the sight explained exactly how she was able to navigate this building despite her ginormous size. Her form was malleable, more like clay than the rigid physical body you possessed. As you followed, her body was softer than soft. It pulsed and warped upstairs and around corridors as though it were a splash of water caught in the vibrations of binaural beats. She was a shape-shifting titan, contorting and compressing to fit inside her abode. As you wondered what this building was and what she did here, she disappeared. It didn't worry you though, you just went ahead. 
the light coming from outside of the windows fractured into chromatic prisms. You were bathed in these soft, pretty hues as you walked further down the passage ahead. There was an opening to a hall, extending as a tall glass arch. Inside the space was a pastel-coloured cafe. Large glass windows encircled the array of tables and chairs, and beautiful flowers and plants decorated the interior. Soft music played from an indiscernible location. The perfect place to enjoy a light cup of coffee or tea. As you gazed out of the window, the air smelt like roses and sugar, but also of something more bitter and spicy. It was perfect. In fact, everything about it was perfect. However, there was no one else but yourself here. You had come early this morning and surmised you arrived before opening time. There you spotted her again. Behind a counter made of pearl, she watched you enter. She was still gigantic, but nowhere near the size she had been before. Perhaps nine feet now, dressed in a silk, pale blue gown, braided about the waist, skimming over the lovely plumpness of her body. She had tattoos all over her skin, iridescent, symmetrical markings that glowed faintly. Geometric in nature, most were etched around her collar bones, shoulders, and her upper arms. If there were any more, they were hidden under her dress. These lines of teal light were faint and shimmering. She was a beautiful display of colours that reminded you of a dream you had once. The one where there was nothing but darkness before being beckoned out of it by magically induced sparkles. She smiled at you with a hand to her chest. She spoke in her strange, lilted voice once more. Peel, oh peel. You? Peel, oh peel. Oh, peel, oh peel. That was her name. You replied with your own name, unconsciously giving her a bow. You walked over to the counter, hands tentatively resting on its surface, glancing at what shone behind the giant hess. It was a magical kitchen. The strange moonlight machinery and crystal pillars that lined the kitchen seemed to glow. Here the air smelled of spices and chocolate. And there were even some kind of confectionery growing in the pots on the shelves behind. Even the furniture behind you had a strange glow about it. The plush velvet armchairs covered in gold leaf and the embroidered silk cushions. Everything seemed enchanted to an overwhelming degree. The ovens were lit with gentle spots of light that floated gently around the walls and over the countertops. These lights were powering everything that was humming behind the counter, while the oven was emitting a warm white light. A green glow came from a small bowl of flowers sitting in front of it. That was when you remembered. The delivery. Oh, yes, here you are. You handed over the leather pouch, inside with the gigu petals, purple in colour, all shaped like blades of grass. Is this what you were looking for? You asked. The lady took a closer look at the package, running her little finger gently through the petals. Looks, yes, but make sure first. Pilo Pil took the parcel from you. What was a purse-sized bag for you was the size of a salt packet for her. Plucking the contents from the bag, the woman placed the gigu petals on a silver disc, covering it with a glass dome. She turned a dial, and a white flame settled around the petals in a circle. A deep, Pink smoke clouded the dome, and a grin spread across Pilopil's face 
hands clasped together in elation. That is the one! Thanking you and thanking Taggle. Efforts rewarded. She rushed to the front of the counter and herded you into the far right of the cafe. Take the window seat. Pilo Peel pulled the chair out for you and you slinked into the seat in the corner. The sky outside was still a lovely pink as far as you could tell. You must try, yes? New recipe! Oh, she wanted to serve you some of her food. You weren't going to turn down her offer, but you did think about how you were going to pay for it. That bit of silence was enough for Pillow Peel's expression to grow with concern. As to not offend, you nodded enthusiastically. Her size and manner of speaking played with your own inhibition. Both of you were nervous, however, you weren't sure why she was nervous about you. She nodded back and splashed towards the kitchen, using her malleable form once again, before swirling back to you with a tray of delights, all different sizes and textures of sweet things. Your eyes were awash with culinary sweet dreams. You watched golden syrup ooze down a cake onto the plate below, spreading to all the colourful sweets on the tray. You didn't know where to start, so you started very clumsily. Dragging a finger through the sticky puddle, you sucked the liquid from your fingertip. You expected to taste the sweet, familiar flavour of honey, but instead you were confronted with a sour, almost fizzy taste. The closest flavour you could relate to it was a perfumed lemon jam. Mm, but what is this stuff? You cocked an eyebrow, looking expectantly at the lady. Pagoyan syrup. The tree sitting by the river? The syrup lives there. It has such a strange taste, you offered. Yes, you're right. You need cake to make it nice. Pilo Peel gestured to the cake in front of you. Try it. Try it together. There was a piece of cutlery similar to a honey stick, except the top was smoothed out and shaped like a teardrop. Pilo Peel glanced at the instrument and happily showed you how to use it. She took the stick and dripped it into the honey-like substance, waiting for the train of liquid to cease before dragging it through one of the cakes, the sponge creating a thick layer that wrapped around the end of the stick. Then a warm smile beamed across her face and she presented the confectionery to you like a lollipop. The syrup coat cake slipped from the instrument and onto your tongue with ease. The floral sweetness slinked around your mouth and down your throat. In a flurry, you consumed it all as quickly as you could. Even the wood of the stick had a faint citrusy taste. It was wonderful, like having cake for breakfast. Pilo Peel returned to the kitchen, baking and prepping the confectionery due to be served today. You devoured all of the other sweets, orange crystals shaped like oversized sugar flakes, incredibly sweet crystal granules to the point where they almost tasted sour, milk white cubes with the consistency of chocolate, pink swirls that tasted like bonbons, everything was mouth-wateringly divine. With your final mouthful, you hesitantly called out, Um, how much will this be? Pilo Peel shook her head, a strand of grey-blue hair loosened and curled at her cheek. No, no favours needed. Favours? What does she mean by favours? Perhaps something lost in translation again. You stood up and went to the counter, offering the brooch, but still Pillow Pale shook her head no. Instead, she handed you something else. Another parcel. This one had the appearance of being made of spider silk. No open. Only tackle. Keep it safe, yes? You replied with a yes, confirming no one would see it but tackle. My, my, what strange transactions went on in this town? And so, 
you bid Pillow Pill farewell, with the odd Epiapian custom of telling her you'd wait for her echo. She grinned, bowed her head, and repeated the mantra back to you. You headed the way you came, just as you were trying to remember the route you took, a citrus scent emerged out of nowhere and beckoned you back the way you came. Through the winding corridors, something caught your gaze that hadn't before. A small door, low to the ground, inconspicuous against the colourful halls that surrounded it. A basement door. The basement. That same encroaching sensation you had at the cottage all that time ago. Pilo Peel and her abode had nothing to do with this feeling, no, it was the resurfacing of swept aside traumas, the breaking of a world before your eyes, and the elimination of three innocent girls. Basements, oh, basements. What horrors linger there, are ones entitled to occupy the skies, as above, so below. Snapping your gaze away, you hurried out of the corridor, in the entrance where you let a long breath go, and your shoulders relax, knowing you were mere moments from the fresh air, and seeing Taggle once again. The spheres of sound entered your head once more. Turning around, there was Peel O'Peel's giant face again, almost pressing you to the back of the door. Her sharp breath made your clothes flutter, and you wondered if you had forgotten to do another Epiapian custom when Peel O'Peel closed the gap between you. Her lower lip covered your eyes, and her upper lip brushed the crown of your head. A kiss. A giant, almost all-consuming kiss. For safety, she whispered. Th thank you? Welcome, was her happy reply, her blue eyes sparkling. The doors then opened all by themselves, and you, bewildered, returned to the streets of Orofahin. Hi everyone, I hope you are well. Um, yes, this chapter was a little hard to write. Um, <laughs> I got very sick for quite a few weeks, so this was a little bit of a rush job, but, uh, well, I've got it to you. It's out on time, thankfully, and hopefully the next chapter will make up for the rushness of this. I would have maybe explain a few things a bit more, but I'm still not entirely well, so I don't, I don't have a lot of the energy, <laughs> but hopefully by next month I should be writer's reign again, and I will give you a really good chapter next time. So yeah, I hope you have been very well, and yep. Till next time, take care, bye bye!